Hi, uh, welcome back everyone. Um, today what we're going to do is uh, try and put back together the gearbox for the Husqvarna uh, to TC65. Same as a KTM 65. Um, and if you remember, it was gearbox parts and managed to get them eventually. So I apologise for it being a few weeks since I put out the video before, but one reason we're waiting for these parts, I think it's been six weeks, we've been waiting for them with the problems with their uh, transport and coming from, I think it's Austria where they come from. Um, other things, I've uh, been away on holiday. Uh, last weekend I had my 60th birthday, so we're away for the weekend with the family. And I know what you're thinking, I don't look 60, but there you go. Um, so today I'm going to try and put these gears onto the shafts first and then we'll start assembling the engine. Right, so I've got the two shafts done there. Um, change the gears. You can see this is the old gear off here. And that one's not too bad. It's, it's only got one notch out of it. Let's see, where is it? There's a tooth missing there. Or half a tooth. But this one here, on the input shaft, you can see there, the teeth are all chewed away here. Um, looks like it was caused by a failure of a circlip. Now the circlips on here, um, it seems to be a weak point with these. I was measuring and on this shaft here, the grooves for the circlips to go in are less than a third of a millimetre. And um, so it seems like, you know, they can wear and get pushed out of place. But anyhow, so they're put back together now and say that's the way they would fit. There's the washer, thrust washer off the end. Each shaft's got a thrust washer on the end, so you've got to be careful with those. Now, we've got to try and fit them in together, but what probably is happening is the bits will fall apart. So I'm going to put that washer right down on the bottom there. And maybe some of these other gears, because they're going to just fall off. So put them down in place. Because you, you can't really put one shaft in at a time, you've got to put the two in together, otherwise they won't get past each other. So that washer again, so I'll take that top one off as well. So I've got some of the gears in place there, take the two shafts try and hold them together, and then try and place them in. gear back on and the thrust washer. Now you'd say they rotate a little but they're not rot rotate all the way and that's because some of the gears are selecting and we've got more than one gear selected. But when we get the, the uh, selector forks in place then everything should be okay. Right so selector forks this one is for the the input shaft Unusual thing about these KTMs and Husqvarna's, they've got uh, springs on the end of these shafts which I've never seen before until I start working on KTMs. And you can see it's uh, KTM and Husqvarna, they've got both names on the box there if you can see it. So what you've got to try to do is put the selector fork on the gear and try and get it into the drum. Once, ah, that's another thing as well with them. I'll show you on this one. These pins aren't held in. They're just loose. Come out. So they're only held in place once they're in there. This pin is holding that in place as well. So let's see. So if I can get it lined up in the right place, which I take it it's that one, and then the pin goes in, and then this one's a little bit more difficult. We've got two of them. It's the pin out which I was talking about, and they go in. Let's see, it'll be that way, no, that way. So 
down there. Try and get this one in here where it runs. And then we've got to try and get the pins in. Right, that's it, put the pins in and then we're going to put the main spindle in, the main pin, whatever you want to call it. Right, so hopefully they're in the right place now. now if I, so I can rotate this, make sure everything's okay. Let's see if we turn it. Got to try and find first gear, which I think that's first gear, because I can see one of the pins is right at the end of the, the slot that goes round it. So I can see there, and um, if I hold one shaft and try to turn the other, I can fail. It is in gear. It's not. They're not spinning freely. Right. So. Right. That's neutral because they're both turning. Separately, we turn that one. This one's not turning. Hard to try and turn this drum. I'll see if I can get on the other side. I'll get an Allen key on there and turn the drum. So I'll see if I can find one of those. Right. So to make sure it's selecting gears up there, I've got an Allen key here on the end of the drum. In place. Now if I go, well there we've got, it's in neutral at the moment, I'm turning one shaft, the other one's not turning. Click it down and that should select, let's see, first gear. So that's turned fine. So, back to neutral. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth. Fifth gear. Sixth gear. Yeah, so all the gears are selecting there. So I'm going to just clean up the surface and then we'll try and put the two halves of the casing together. And this has got a gasket in there, so I uh, may put a little bit of paste on there just to help it seal correctly. Right, so I've put the gasket in place. Um, I've used just a smidge of this Alamar Blue. I always try to use that, it's really good, much better than uh, these silicon, uh, silicon gasket pastes. It never sets like silicon goes with the rubber and then that's it. This seems to never set and it's always tacky. So if it gets disturbed it will still reseat again. Um, so I'm going to try and put this on to here. Um, now normally when I'm doing a full rebuild I would be replacing the bearings and I would be heating them up and cooling things down to get them to fit easy. This came off with not too much bother so I'm hoping it's just going to slide on there without too much bother again. So wiggle things about because you have got a lot of different shafts which are going together. It feels like it's pulling in there. It might just need a little bit of persuasion. Just give me a small mallet just to make sure everything goes alright. Only a little bit of tapping. That's just a double pin. Um, Oh, 
crank's turning nicely. Okay, seem to be turning OK. So we start putting the bolts in. Now, what I normally do with the bolts is start with the longest ones. Because a long one won't go into a short hole. Like that. Whereas a shorter one let's see, will go in a long hole. So I'll start off with the longest ones and just drop them in. Now they're sticking up about 12 15 millimeters. And let's see where will that one go? Right, and then there's if we go down now that looks to be sticking up a bit farther, with, so then maybe the short ones. So they're all sticking up about the same there. Now to speed things up, let me suck it. I tend to use just electric screwdriver on a low setting. See, it's set on the lowest setting, so it won't go trying to strip them. need to nip them up. Right, so nip them up, I'm going to go around with a socket and what I'm going to do is start around the crank here. Because uh, it's important that there's a good seal there. I'm trying to go around in a sort of a star pattern. Yeah, it's important there's a good seal there because it's it can suck air in if it's uh, if you're not careful and it will affect all the mixture and everything. When I go around the gay box, I tend to go around the bottom and work my way up. And then, if there's anything not seating right, it'll be at the top rather than the bottom, so you're less likely to have an oil leak. So, you normally got to work your way around a few times. As the gaskets settle. Right, so nothing's tight there, it's all moving freely, so no, everything should be alright in the gay box there. Um, right. Right, before I go any further, I'll just attach the gear lever and then we'll just double check that we are getting all the gears there. So it should be in neutral. So, down the first and I've got a hold of the other side shot, so as I'm turning it, it's spinning round. Back up to neutral. It's not turning. First, second, sorry, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then sixth. Sometimes you find the difficult to get in gear when the engines are up running because they're not rotating like they would be normally on the bike. So let's start the fifth. Again, you've got to turn it. Fourth. Third. Second. Neutral. Oh, done the first. And then back up the neutral. That's it, so everything seems okay there. Right, so now we know the gearbox is okay. What I'm going to do is put the ignition on so that we've got the flywheel to hold in case I want to help tighten anything up. Now when I took this off, let's see, went on there. 
Don't know if you can see, but there's a tiny little mark on there, scribe mark, and there's a tiny little one, the case in there. So we'll put that back together. We'll know the ignition's going to be exactly in the same place as when it came off. There's just three bolts holding that, but they are they are slotted the um, they are slotted in the case in there so that you can adjust the timing. We're just going to put it back to where it was. Flywheel. Now the the Woodruff key is in there. So we've got to make sure it gets this lined up right so that it slots in. That's it. And we've got the washer which came off, which is a spring washer. And the nut. So I've just got my flywheel holder to hold on to the flywheel while I nip it up. Right, that should do it. Take the gear lever off for now. Because yeah, it's getting in the way a little bit. Right, we heard a couple of things dropping. There was these two little devils just going to here. Right, so on this side we've got the clutch basket and everything to put back in there. I'm going to start off with the main drive cog that comes out of the on the crank. Now there's a woodruff key in here as well, so we've got to make sure that woodruff key lines up. everything on and then the clutch basket it's gonna go next and tighten these two up. Now, I don't know if my clutch, my um, flywheel tool is going to hold this. I'll just go and go out and have a look. Right, my flywheel holder, it's uh, too big to throw in these holes. But I've got this one here, which I've made years ago with two bolts sticking through, so we'll give that one a try. Right, so I've got these two nice and tight now. I'm going to put the case on, the drive for the water pumps in here. Um, we've got the little cover which goes onto the clutch for the to depress the clutch. And what I've done, I've put a little smearing of gasket paste round the two areas where the water pipe goes through. 
I'm not too keen on that idea where you've got the water pump, the water goes in through the pump, through there, into the casing of the engine, the crankcase, and then up through the barrels. Uh, when I used to do moped mayhem racing, it was the RS50 engines I used to use off the Aprilias, and they were the same as this, but the derbies were a little bit better in that they had a pump where the water went into the pump, then they had another pipe came off which went into the side of the, of the barrel. And that way you didn't have this waterway going through the uh, the casing, which was much better, I thought, anyhow. Right, now then, I've got to remember where that bolt goes, because it's got a spring on it. And, uh, let's see, I think it went there. So, let's see. So, we'll pop the gasket in place. Make sure this doesn't drop out the little uh, drive wheel for the water pump. Just a couple of dowels there, so they've located on there. And there's another one in here. So be careful to get them lined up right. Then the gasket. And just to turn that a little bit to get the water pump lined up. Right, so the gasket seems like it's in the right place all the way around. Right, so bolts and again starting off with the longest. Four long ones and then yeah, four short ones, they're all the same size. Everything's still turning okay. A little tab there for a spring to go into for the rear brake just to keep the rear brake up. Right then the next thing we've got a little or oh, the plate that goes on there is on the bike because it's got a pipe on it so that will go on there for the uh, clutch when we're finished. Right I'm not going to put that cover on yet because it's handy for turning that over while we're Assemble on the top end. Just get the piston out. Let's give this a little bit of a clean. Right now, try and get the piston on. Um, now I don't know if you can see, there's a little hole down here, there's one at either side, and they're oilways so that the fuel oil mixture can run down there into the main bearings and lubricate those. So I'm just going to put a little drop of oil down each one, just so that 
got a little bit of lubrication when we first start off. The same with the little end bearing, got a little bit of oil around there. So until the fuel gets worked right round there, at least it's got some initial lubrication. Now I've got one of the circlips in the piston, the other one's going to go in once we get the gudgeon pin pushed through. lined up right. There we go. And now's the difficult bit. Now when you do this, let's put, I'll put the circlip in. It appears to put a rag or a bit something. I'm just using the just using the uh, roll. It's like blue roll this but it's not blue it's white. So sir clip's got to go on here. Now the paper or the rag, whatever you put on there, is to stop this falling down into the gearbox. I mean into the bottom end and then you have a right job trying to get it back out. You don't be going to the extremes of having to strip the engine right down again to get it in there. Now this is where you've got to be careful that you don't damage the actual piston trying to get this sir clip in there. Right, that's it snapped into place and what I normally do is try to rotate that a little bit just to make sure that it is properly in the groove and it's not going to jump out. Yeah. Right. Now the uh, barrel is going to go on next. What I'm going to do again where these these two openings here are going in the crankcase that's for the water to come through. So I'm going to put a little bit of gasket paste around there just so that we don't get any leaks. Right next thing so I've got those uh, a little bit of paste on there. Put a little bit of oil around the barrel and again just for initial lubrication and find it'll be kicking out loads of smoke when you first start it up. Uh, and a little bit of oil around the ring and the piston. And this will also help the compression when you first start it up. The piston was all coked up, a lot of carbon on it, but that'll be because. Uh, it's a kid's motocrosser and when kids are learning sometimes they're just tootling round, not uh, flat out, so you do get a lot of carbon build up. Right, the uh, the barrel normally has a little bit of uh, tape on it to help the ring go in. The little pins at the back holding the pin in the ring in place. And you've got to make sure that there's an arrow pointing forwards on the piston towards the exhaust port. They normally have an arrow there and it, it always points towards the exhaust. Right, let's come in there. Got the gasket on already. That's turned look here. Yep. And then we'll try and get these there. Uh, These bolts all on here. Now I didn't split the uh, the head from the barrel because the there wasn't much point. I was only working on the bottom end, so everything sh should still be okay. I meant to show you the uh, power valve on these. Got a power valve which goes down, and as the revs rise, or the, you open the throttle and the revs rise, it, uh, it puts pressure through this pipe which is connected to the exhaust and it opens up the power valve. So you can try just by blowing into there, and you can hear it lift. Right. 
Right, so, so you just need to tighten these down. So that we're getting some compression and I'm going to check the clearance on the piston as well just to make sure everything's okay. Should be, we haven't changed anything there. Well, it's nice to know everything's fine. Some compression there. Right now, to check the clearance, normally use a piece of solder. So I've got a piece of solder and just bend it over a little bit, so you can feel it. Sorry, so you can feed it into the hole there, and as you're moving up and down, you can feel it scraping the side of the barrel. Then turn the engine over, and then you'll feel it nip it, and then you'll find it's flattened the end a little bit. Now sometimes you have a, yeah, it's got a little bit of a little bit of a fat end on it. Just nip that end off. And that's where if the piston's been there and the wall's there, there's been a little bit of a gap and the solder's like pushed down the side there as it's been squashed. So I've just cut the end off there and then using a the micrometer, just measure the width of that. Right, now that's about points, point 0.7, the other side was point 0.65 and that should be enough for this, on a, these you can go down to about point 0.5 so um, that's fine what we've got there, plenty of clearance. When you do it, always do it in line with a gudgeon pin, you get true reading because the, the piston can't rock that way but it can rock a little bit the other way due to the clearance in the barrel so you might get a false read in there so I always do it on the sides so that's okay I'm happy with the clearance there all right now next thing is to put on the uh, just the reed valve and then we're about ready to go I think um, let's see reed valve here yeah, the petals in there look okay. Carbon fibre ones. about ready to put this into the bike. Um, I haven't put the see, I haven't put the gear lever on and I'm not going to put the kickstart in yet because uh, you find you'll put them on and then you'll go and put it in the bike and you'll find it sticking in the wrong position so I've got to be adjusted in here. So I'll leave that for now. So I think the only thing left is uh, to put on the side casing here um, for the ignition, the ignition cover and we'll put the sprocket on as well from the, uh, from the output shaft. sprocket on this shaft there's an o-ring which has got to fit into there first stop the oil coming out from coming up the inside and then there's this space to go on it's got a taper on which has got to go downwards 
so that the o-ring sits inside of there and then we've got the sprocket and then we've got a sir clip to go on top of there drain plug. I'll put that in there. It's one of those magnetic ones. Right, so I'll just nip that up and then we'll get this popped into the frame. Well, I've got the engine and the bike. It's running, start up great. I was going to show you it running, but uh, the lads came and he's took it away straight away, so I haven't had a chance to do that. Um, don't know what I'm going to move on to next. I've got a couple of bikes I need to look at. Um, Stuart, he wants us to have a look at his uh, JS 550 again. He's having problems, seems like, with the ignition again. Um, so you never know, might be resetting the points or fitting the electronic ignition to that. And uh, I have got a Honda Hornet. Somebody wants us to have a look at that. So um, it could be one of those jobs, or we might be on with Trigger's broom again. I'm not that concerned about getting Trigger's broom uh, pushed on at the minute. Um, I'll chip away at it, but there's no urgency now. I've missed the summer, it's been and gone, so it's going to be next year before that gets on the road. Uh, so, anyway, thanks for watching everybody, and uh, if you like what you've seen, can you hit the like button and subscribe? Really appreciate that. And uh, thanks for all the comments that are uh, still getting. So hopefully I'll see you again next time. But in the meantime, take care everyone.